Whoa, it's the illusion reporting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth. I'm uh, in the Terra Cruiser, taking the other road off the mountain, going to uh, going to work, man. Do my mentoring job today. Basically, get to go skateboarding on the clock. Love that. That's that's good dreaming, right? But anyway, had a kind of a radical day yesterday, man. In the sense of. I took the mini Graham to her first skate park experience. We went where we, we were over at a uh, skate lab in Simi Valley and I was with my mentor and the mini Graham was grounded for causing trouble at school last week. So she had to spend the day with me in the car and it just turned out we were at the skate park. So I put her helmet on her and, uh, cut her loose. Oh, it wasn't that easy. So I guess the point of why I'm making this video is the mini gram is she's a pretty tuned in kid, man, on a whole deep level caught in the terrestrial 3d dream. Like the rest of us, you know, I'm going to give you guys the view of what we see cruising down the mountain here. I think the reflection should go away of my dashboard. If not, we'll make an adjustment here in a minute. But uh, anyway, the uh, so the mini Graham puts her helmet on and her skateboard down and she instantly freezes because it's a full skate park of madness. It's a Saturday, so there's just kids everywhere just flying around, running into each other. But that's not really what worries her. What worries her is she's never really skated in a park before and she just started skateboarding and she's afraid she's gonna look stupid. So she won't take the first push, right? And I talked to her and I found her a little friend to skate with, this other little girl, which will come into the story later. So I, it takes me about 10 minutes of talking to her about overcoming the thoughts in her head. I was like, look, nobody cares here at the skate park whether you look crazy or stupid or fall down or run into people. It's what skateboarding's all about. But you know, it's her first experience in a full-blown skate environment. Up until this point, it's just been me and her skating in a parking lot. So. I go, look, just follow me, man. I'm going to block for you. And her little friend is super fired up that she just met. And so it's the first step, right? Like the first push. I go, look, Georgie, it's the mini Graham's name. I go, it's going to, the, the hardest part of a journey of a thousand miles is the first step. All you got to do is start pushing and the stuff will disappear. Well, what was going on was, the voice inside her head was talking to her. And we had a big, huge talk about the voice inside her head after we got done skating because she heard the voice inside her head was telling her to sit down, that she didn't want to do this, that she can't do this, that she's not part of, that she's separate, that she's awkward, blah, blah, blah. And we overcame the voice inside her head. Actually, she had a rad day. I was getting her to drop in, not fully unassisted, but her and her little buddy, I was helping them to drop in and then do turns on the big wall. And so basically I had the, this phenomenal, like, I don't know, parental mentor vibe with these two young girls learning to skateboard. Like I was their teacher, I was the instructor. I've never really thought I could teach anyone to skate, but right again, that's my voice inside my head telling me I can't, I'm less than, I don't have the ability to. So the mini Graham overcame the voice inside her head and started skating and having a good time. And she just wanted to skate more. It was pretty cool actually, because at a certain point, she just wanted to skate because I was like, let's go take a break and then I'm gonna go over to the uh, big bowl and skate around for a bit. 
I got like four runs in before her and her little buddy were like, let's go skate again. Come on, let's go with us. Cause now I was their official like blocker. Ah, these guys, yeah, just all lanes, all lanes. The bike guys are so out of hand and arrogant sometimes, man. I just don't get how they don't understand the like cars are gnarly. I just happened to be a relatively skilled driver, so I didn't run him over. But anyway, I I I, I tangent, I digress. So the mini Graham overcame the voice inside her head, and we've been having a big talk because that's what got ultimately got her into trouble at school the other day. Was someone was calling her names and she felt different and odd and awkward and so she retaliated yeah the mini grams kind of gnarly dude she's super kind of badass dude i can't wait till she gets her whole spiritual center so we had a big talk about that she recognizes the voice inside her head she can hear it talking because we talk about it a lot and i was telling her to become the observer of the voice inside her head and realize that the voice inside her head is not who she is. The one telling her she can't or feels weird or separate is not truly who she is. She is the observer. And it's a little bit over her head because she is only 10 years old. But what was kind of the cool part, I was like, look, I'm 45, about to be 46. I didn't truly get an understanding about who I was and the observer and the voice inside my head till I was 40. I go, if you can figure this out now at 10 years, you're 30 years ahead of me on the spiritual quest in this lifetime. I mean, yeah, we only have today, so I mean, that's kind of future tripping. But for a 10 year old kid, man, to like, be able to grasp some of these ideas and overcome them. It was super cool because it was like one of those weird things like trust building, like when I was getting her to drop in and stuff, like I feel like, you know, we I hold her arms and like drop her in, dude, just from observing what the other people have tried to do. And like she grips super hard. And the other kid who's kind of a natural, she doesn't grip at all. She just lets me, she just uses me as basically a spotter. But the mini Graham has to overcome this trust obstacle because she's had a hard little life so far, you know. It hasn't been all easy and who am I? And so, but we have a really cool bond. And so yesterday was super magical in that sense of like, me and the mini Graham had a big day and it was her first day at skateboarding. And I think, I think it really might be clicking in with her how much fun she can have on a skateboard. And it was super cool to dial her in with her little friend. And then what was the cool part is I went and talked to her little friend's mom and I set up a skateboarding like play date. Like they live on the other side of the city, but I was like, hey, look, man, it, would it be cool if we put the kids together so they can go skateboarding? Because skateboarding is one of those. It's a, it's a group activity, man. No one wants to skate alone. And especially a little 10 year old girl and a little eight year old girl. They're looking for some, you know, com camaraderie. Cause you know, the boys are off doing their thing, man. And not that there's any difference on a skateboard. It's just a different dynamic, man. When you're, when there's 40 10 year old boys at a skate park and there's two girls, it, it's just weird, I would imagine, for the little girls because they are girls, even though, you know, it doesn't really matter in the long run of life because Kara Beth Burnside is one of the most badass skaters ever and so is is Jules Lynn dude I mean the the level of dude Jules Lynn is gnarly dude on a whole nother level but anyway I digress into us again so this is the illusion I'm at the bottom of the canyon we'll uh we'll get you to the final this is where the canyon pops out onto the PCH boom there it is so, the illusion. Gonna go have a high frequency day. I hope you're all doing the same. I'm out.